so far it's been one of those days. It began with the sun rising, as it often does. I was lying on my mattress in the garden. I felt the need for natural stimulus. As the sun rose, it woke me, and I looked out through my mosquito net at the foliage. There was still a morning dampness in the air. My face was wet. Birds were busy. I lay there looking up as the sky got bluer and bluer. We drove for an hour or so into the suburb. The houses began to get smaller. There were less and less trees. There were no traffic lights anymore. We headed off on a dirt road disintegrated into a gravel path. I could see the lights. The first thing, the first thing, the first thing. They often say the first thing, or once upon a time, as if suddenly there was nothing and then there was something. I don't want to get too philosophical here today. I just want to create a slight pensive possibility like a soap bubble thrown up and we're all lying back in deck chairs and this big soap bubble grows bigger and bigger and as we sit back we begin to see things moving in that soap bubble. It's a screen of sorts. And we realize it's a huge eyeball. An eyeball in the sky. And there are a myriad of scenes playing out. It transpires that each person is seeing their own private soap bubble cinema. Thank you. 
the chance to go up I can't believe it. The, the picture is every bit as good as the words. That one about took me out last night. You try to remain fairly straight-faced, you know, as you take calls, but every, every now and then there's one that gets to you, the lady with the grow lights. First time caller line, you are on the show. I'd like to lie down and sleep. Let me on the road. Fine way to spend a wedding night. I'm looking. The bear. Smash the scalpel. They're all dark. Everybody's asleep. Now we'll have to wake up Mrs. Fletcher with the fall. Joe. What? Look in front of our cabin. Hey, that's our car. The murderer must have driven here and it's by another road to wait for him. What do you want? I'm just in the car. Wait here, I'll go and see. No, he'll kill him. We both saw his face. He's got to kill us both. If I go over there alone, he won't shoot till he knows where you are. Please, I'm okay. Stay back here in the shop. It'll be all right. <laughs> it's okay, Nancy. The car is empty. Is he just hiding somewhere close by? No, he must have skipped off. But... Why? Why would we bring our car back here? He wanted to get it away from the bridge. Don't you see? He must have dumped that girl's body in the river, and then he took our car away. No trace. I'm scared, John. Maybe he's hiding inside the cabin. What, 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 what? Be a sap. One shot would wake up all the people in the other cabins, and Mrs. Swenson. So he'd never get away, 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 away. Come on. We're going in our cabin and get cleaned up. <laughs> then we'll use the pool. There was one word that came up in many times in the conversation with Jean-Philippe. Melancholy. The idea basically is that people suffer from melancholy when they are enabled to go beyond the mourning period or the work of mourning, as Freud described, which we all go through at different, different levels. And so some people, some individuals, some patients, actually are not able to solve or go beyond the grief process, and so they're constantly caught in, in this kind of a circling in their minds about the inability to let go of the lost loved one or the lost object. The specificity of that definition made me wonder if we need to go more granular to explore sadness properly. Here's Professor Thomas Dixon. Yes, yes. And in Portugal, there's a word sadness family so iconic, even got its own unique trees. Well, you know what, uh, Danny, actually, that's the central purpose of this program. Sometimes, and I, I say this to people, we explore things that are probably total BS. Many times we explore things that turn out to be headlines uh, in, a, in a very short time. So, you know, you're going to hear the cutting edge here one way or the other, and it's up to you to make up your own mind, Danny, about what's BS and what's a real thing. Yeah, well... I certainly do hear a variety of things on this program. Yes. I've learned to take them with a grain of salt, all, all really thoroughly examine them, whether they're true or not. <laughs> well, if, if these subjects are not brought up in any forum at all, then people don't expand their minds and think, think about, about, about normally wouldn't. Anyway, what's up otherwise? Well, I was calling in regards to the end of the world. Yes. And I don't think it'll happen. You don't? 
No, I believe that by the time humanity gets to a point where we all have to take that into consideration, we will have evolved technologically and culturally to a point where we'll be able to conquer anything. Let's try and find something else. Let's try and find something else, shall we? I'm not saying that we should all dance to the same tune. I think we should all dance, though. Some say, some physicists say, some deep level, deep thinking physicists say that molecules dance. Some deep level theosophists say it's true on a deep level. On a fundamental level, the universe is just one big dance. There are cults that believe that dancing will align you with the cosmic dance. Move just a little bit. You can't help it. Some people say they can't dance. Well, it's perhaps better to say you don't dance. Little 
It occurred to me that sometimes things are make or break. They had been together for over 30 years. They'd met when she was 22. They got married and had three children. Bought a house, upgraded that. Formed a business, upgraded that. And then he left. A huge change, like a roof caving in. A boat coming adrift from the mooring, and no one to help. No family to nestle into. Slow digestion. The mirage, the passing time, slow changes. Many suffer brutal shock, breaking of the mechanism, a brutal, sudden change. I don't know, when was the last time you went to Woolworths? There are gaps in the shelves. 
there's no pasta. And the ice cream is always full price. He had been a special advisor to the Prime Minister. He had been the style consultant to the Australian Prime Minister. It was he who had advised the dark blue tie on all occasions. I asked him which Prime Minister. He said he wasn't able to divulge that information. But this brings up some very curious things that happened just before Dennis Tito was launched, which was on Saturday morning at 37 Mountain Time, yeah. our, our, our time. Yeah. Because as you may or may not know, if you've been following this story, everybody out there, our space station, our glittering jewel of the best and the brightest and the state of the art, had massive catastrophic failures in all of its computer systems. That's amazing. Simultaneously. That is amazing because, you know, even here, Richard, that's amazing, Richard. That's truly amazing. I'm gonna write it down. I'm gonna take note. I'm gonna sit with it. I'm gonna ponder it. I'm gonna chew it around. Hold it close. <laughs> 